after October 7th, I started to read everything I could find on Palestine, on the history of Palestine, the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, Ilan Pape, and many other authors. Um, and I'll get back to that. Uh, but after that, then I started to read uh, Angela Davis' autobiography and then Malcolm X uh, autobiography and then of course since he was talking about slavery I started reading about slavery and after the slavery the lynching and the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan and I have actually found out that the USA have never paid any sort of reparation to the black people in America to American, to African Americans. Never any reparation. Only since 1865, just after uh, the abolition of slavery, when there was a resolution called um, 40 Acres and a Mule, which would help the ex-slaves to rebuild their lives. But apart from that, there has, yeah, at some point the Congress um, in the 90s perhaps, uh, said sorry, something like that, but no reparations. So I think that this is interesting because, okay, this video is about the psychological dynamics of this war, of Israel's war on Gaza. And I'm talking about this, about slavery and about the lack of reparations, because this, this leads me to talk about impunity, about Israel, uh, Israel's uh, long-term uh, impunity. And the thing is that impunity is a very problematic thing. I'm thinking also about this film by Joshua Oppenheimer called The Act of Killing, in which he's talking about Indonesia and and um, and he interviewed all those people. Um, they were older, of course, because it's in the 70s and the 80s, or the, from the 60s to the 70s, I think that they killed hundreds of thousands of people, saying that they were communist, and they killed them in all sorts of horrible ways, and. Oppenheimer went there to, to interview these people and because the government in Indonesia has never punished those people and the government is not really, you know, they, so they, 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 there is impunity there. Those uh, people who were uh, dressed like gangsters and they were calling themselves gangsters uh, they were explaining to him with all, like, it was natural, you know, how they killed the people, you know, and what they did. And they were laughing and commenting like that, as if it was something normal. So, impunity is problematic because you lack a process of knowledge. So, let me, okay, I have been a drug addict and a prostitute. I have transformed my life. And I have become somebody who is uh, dedica fully dedicated, dedicated to her mission to, to, uh, with my art and with my photography, therapeutic photography, namely, to help other people to transform their lives, you know, and, and uh, looking at the best in people, you know, and, and fighting the stigma and, and allowing people to see their, their, their full potential. Yeah, so this is my work, yeah. And, and, um, and I work in prison. Uh, I work in prison precisely because of this. I change my life and transform my life. So I tell my story and I think, well, uh, you know, we, we can all do that, you know. Anyway, um, working in prison, I have realized that when you have done something bad and you pay for it, uh, so you have been punished, yeah, and in some way or other. I was never in prison, but uh, I mean, the, the punishment was internal, and 
I suffered a lot from what I had done. Yeah. So in a way, I had paid for it. So when you pay for for, for what the, the 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 harm you have done, this is an incredible process of deep knowledge of oneself and of the others and of society and of humanity, because. You have known your worst and you believe that there is something great in you as well, you know, so you want to, to develop that goodness and that greatness, you know, and you do your best because you need to do this. You know? I, I mean, I do need to feel useful. Um, so that's what punishment in a way or other, and I, I don't like the word punishment, but just paying for it, you know, paying for what, for the harm that you have done, is incredibly powerful in terms of process of knowledge, of wisdom. Yeah? But what happens when you do not pay for it? You become stupid. And it's incredible because that's what's happening people, uh, with people in Israel, I think, because right now, 40% of the people in Israel think that the Israeli army is not tough enough, yeah? is not using enough force in Gaza, okay? This is absolutely scary. And, and I think it's stupid as well, because, and how can you think about, I mean, Jewish people are so intelligent, yeah? but the problem is that impunity makes very intelligent people really stupid. To think that if you impose violence for decades on, on another people, you, you, you can achieve safety and security. It's just stupid, you know? Not to know that violence uh, brings more violence and that the Palestinians will never uh, give up their, their struggle and that they will always resist and that this violence that they're perpetrating on them will create more resistance and more pride in this resistance. So, because I think that there is a, yeah, because they are healthy, you know, he healthy people resist and, and have you know their self esteem and their love of and their and they uh, they they respect their own rights and their own needs and that's why they resist and they re and they rebel okay to um to 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 the occupation anyway thing is that when so if doing something bad and paying for it is a process of knowledge not paying for the harm that you have done is a very, uh, it's a process of the opposite. So stupidity, you know, the more and more stupidity because you, you, you don't understand, I don't understand how come, you know, so many people in Israel are not aware of, of this, of the fact that the more violence, the more, the less security and, and you know, and the more resistance and the more rebellion, you know? And, and that they don't realize, they, they don't research their own part in this conflict. So what have I done wrong? Because of course, if there is a conflict and if you really want to solve this conflict, yeah, you're going to you know, approach the other and, and, and recognize, acknowledge your side in the conflict, your faults and your, your part in the conflict. And then listen to the others, listen and acknowledge the other people's needs and the other people's emotions and how they feel and what they need and what they want. And then you come to an agreement, you know. Um, of course, you have to say what you need as well, you know. So um, they should be saying, OK, this is our land, so let's share it, you know, and equal rights for everyone. And... Um, and reparations, and that people can come back, you know, can return, the, the refugees can return. So this is what they should be doing because they should be recognizing that 
in part and probably totally they stole that land i mean they 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 pushed away all the palestinians who were living there since centuries and um of course, it, it, this doesn't mean that Israel does not have the right to... I mean, Israel, if it's the occupying power, no. Then Palestine is for Jews and Muslims and Christians alike to live together, you know, in one whole country from the river to the sea. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make sense to make a state, you know, that has to be fully Jewish and demographically and then therefore oppress the other people because you're never going to achieve any security, yeah? So, um, yeah, then, of course, this is one of the psychological dynamics, you know, when you do, when you don't, the impunity, yeah? But also the impunity is connected to, to the problem of the victim-perpetrator roles, yeah? Because, of course, because of the hol they use the Holocaust to to feel the victims, always the victims, and this seems to give them the the power or the impunity to to perpetrate to be the perpetrators because they say that they are the victims. I mean, this is absolutely sick. This is mentally sick. Uh, this is a mental health problem, very serious mental health problem, yeah. Um, because, and, and, and there is another thing that when you own, when you have a certain power, you, or, or you own something, land for example, but, or you, or you have a certain power or a power position that unconsciously deep inside you know that you don't fully deserve, yeah, because you have stolen part of it, at least part of it, if not all, deep inside, unconsciously, you know that you don't deserve it. And therefore, you're not even aware of this. It's unconscious. And therefore, you become absolutely desperate and aggressive and absolutely insensitive towards the, other, the other's needs, you know, because you just want to uh, uh, prove that this belongs to you and that you have all the rights and the other doesn't, you know. But you, you don't have, you don't allow space for dialogue, you don't allow space for discussion, you know. Because, you, because inside, deep inside, unconsciously, you know that you don't deserve it, full, you, or you don't fully deserve it. Therefore, you will be uh, absolutely blinded, you know, and you're, you're blind towards the other people's needs, you're insensitive to the other people's needs, you're aggressive, you're violent, because you want to impose that, you know, because, because of fear. You are blinded by fear, fear of losing what you do not deserve, yeah? And, and acting from fear is very problematic especially because you don't you don't you're not aware of the harm that you have done because of that impunity because of that of the role of the perpetual vic victim yeah you're not aware or you don't want to be aware yeah you want to dehumanize and demonize the other yeah and i mean intelligent people that think that one can be evil and you, ha you are good and the other is evil. These labels, which are completely false, like everybody knows. You don't have to be so intelligent to know that, that each one of us has good and evil inside and that we have, we have the light and the shadow mixed and, and we have to constantly work on that. How come? It's just total stupidity, total blindness or perhaps just total mental health problem, yeah? Um, yeah, you, you, you're desperate to, to keep that power and keep what you possess and that you don't deserve at all costs, yeah? And then, you, of course, you lack for empathy and, and uh, yeah. But also, acting from fear, 
just takes away your whole inner strength. Yeah? That's why they need to, uh, uh, so much weapons, huge bombs and so much money. You know, they play the role of the victim, Whoa, we are poor and so on. That's why you, you think you need a lot of power and money and everything because you are spiritually dead, spiritually blind and spiritually completely weak. Because when you see Palestinians who have lost everything, I mean, I'm following in, uh, in uh, Snapchat, because in Snapchat you know that you can actually go to a map and see who is posting stuff, you know? So I went into the map, into Gaza, and I was looking at other, what, what people were posting there, yeah, on Snapchat. And I'm following a guy called Ahmed Sami, who is, he's filming his life with his friends and with his beloved friends. And it's just so beautiful to see this solidarity. And in the face of this massacre and this horrible situation where, you know, they film how they managed to get food living in the tents and you see that they are moving from one place to another because the places change and uh, I don't understand Arabic uh, unfortunately so I don't know what they say but but I see their faces I see how they connect to one another I see the solidarity I see that you know when one gets food everybody eats together you know and I see this this beauty of authenticity now, the beauty is not nothing to do with the standards of beauty of the market. It has to do with the truth and the authenticity, with the freedom, and with yeah, with the freedom and with the courage and with. For me, these people are heroes. These people are heroes. These people are fearless, and therefore, I do believe that those who are so weak and so uh, blinded by the power that they have and that they do not deserve might be even very envious of these other, these other people who have been, who have nothing, but they are so rich because they have this authenticity, they have this sense of community, this solidarity, this love, and this, I don't know, it's, it's incredible just to see how they behave, although I do not understand what they say, but it's just the freshness of the truth of the authenticity of the solidarity of the love for one another it's just incredible and therefore I do believe that they are envious in the same way that I've always thought in the since the first time I went to Senegal I and and looking at the uh, I went to Dakar I, I was in Senegal and I was looking at such beautiful people the uh, physical dignity the, the way they move and the way they talk and and then suddenly I was seeing a white person and I was and and this white person seemed sick and and I don't know like you know and I really thought racism comes from envy or can come from envy yeah I'm, I'm sort of exploring the possible uh, psychological dynamics yeah not only in this war, but in general, where the powerful oppress the less powerful. It, it, is, very, it is pretty possible that, that envy is, is, is part of it. Yeah? And because they are guided by fear, and the Palestinians have no fear, or almost. I mean, you can't generalize, of course, but, but, but yeah, they are staying there and they don't want, and most of them don't want to leave, you know. Of course there is fear and the children are afraid. But I think that collectively Israelis are utterly afraid. And so walls and weapons and everything and violence, you know. And, and Palestinians have nothing, they lose everything and they still have this love and this this beauty and this solidarity and this, uh, yeah. But, of course, yeah, and I think that also this envy of the humanity, when you have lost your humanity, you are envious of those who have it because 
there is this richness, yeah? You are envious of those who have this humanity. And actually, so yesterday, the Israeli army killed uh, seven aid workers, yeah, of this uh, World Kitchen, World Central Kitchen, I think it's called. And there were people from Australia, people from the UK, Canada, Americans, Palestinians, everything. So, and and now there is a world outrage uh, about this. Um, they said that it was a mistake and it was obviously not a mistake. So I do believe that they are targeting, they are targeting, targeting the most courageous people. They are targeting journalists because of the communication, of course, but also because they are, they have this courage and this passion, you know. They are targeting doctors and nurses because of the generosity and the humanity and the, and the passion for their work. They are targeting aid workers because they come to, to help people in need with no fear, you know. So they're targeting all these people who have no fear, yeah, because of this envy. But I do believe that Palestinians will make the world free. So the world is changing and the world will change. Perhaps, perhaps it will take time and, and perhaps many more are going to be killed. And, but the sacrifice will not be in vain in any case because we will not stop um, speaking out. Uh, the people have the power, in fact, um, right now, actually, the, I have seen several statistics, and in the UK, um, there is a, f a, a, a huge majority of people who, who would vote uh, for banning the arms uh, sales to Israel from the UK. And um, months ago, there was another, in the UK, another statistics done by The Guardian, I think, uh, saying that uh, there was a vast majority of people in UK who were for the ceasefire. So the, these governments, these Western governments, do not represent their people. And they are scared. They are fucking scared. Yeah? You can see Biden is sick and he's weak and, he, and he's just, uh, it, it's just pathetic how he, he, he's just afraid of losing the elections and he's, all these... And now he's talking about the ceasefire, but then he's sending uh, 19 billion uh, uh, worth uh, or in arms to Israel. And so, and so it's like, who do you think that you're going to fool? You're not going to fool the people, because the people have the power. And right now, all over the world, the people have the power and the people are showing that they care for humanity. So these governments may very well start thinking that if they don't represent the people, then there's something really very wrong, and this is the, the beginning of the end of colonialism, of, of, of fascism, of this violence, of this power dynamics, this sick power dynamics. We cannot be governed by people who are sick of power. This is just not possible. Of course, I don't know what's going to happen in the United States between Trump and Biden. I mean, uh, isn't there anybody else, please, to come out? I hope so. Anyway, the power is with the people. So, yeah, this is the beginning of the end and Palestinians are going to free us all.